Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. The Uvalde Police Department has a new assistant police chief after years without one. This comes nearly one year since the Robb Elementary School shooting. On the day of that shooting, the police chief was out of town and a lieutenant was the acting chief. The newly hired assistant police chief tells the night team's Lee Waldman he'll work to rebuild the relationship between the community and the department. It's a story you'll only see right here on KSAT. Well, my new title will be the Assistant Police Chief of Uvalde Police Department. It's a new chapter for Homer Delgado. He's leaving the Dilly Police Department where he's been the chief for several years to go to Uvalde. I've sat down with the core city management and uh, the current police chief, Daniel Rodriguez, and we've discussed some of the ideas that we both have to improve the service of the police department, improve the trust of the community. Delgado comes with over 25 years of law enforcement experience. In that time, he's worked in nearly every division of law enforcement investigations. Tactical operations, hostage crisis negotiations. Um, I've, I've always been one of those people who, if there was an opportunity, I wanted to, to take it. That includes active shooter training. He's also a trainer for civilian response to active shooters. If there's a situation, um, if there's anything that I can do to make sure that people are safe, I will promise you that I will do it. The day of the Robb Elementary shooting last May, the Uvalde Police Chief Daniel Rodriguez was out of town. Lieutenant Mariana Vargas was the acting chief as the department didn't have an assistant chief to take the lead. Pargas has since left the department and faced major criticism for what some call the lack of action on May 24th. Delgado says with this new role, someone will always be around to take charge in any situation. If the chief has to go out of town, then I'll take control of the, the agency and make the decisions that need to be made. Following the shooting at Rob Delgado brought in over 500 police officers from across the state to help the community during their time of need. He says he's eager to be back, continuing to serve. To the community of Uvalde, I'm, I'm very excited to serve you. If there's anything you need, my door will always be open and I'll be available to you all 24-7. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Delgado starts at Uvalde on May 8th. He is a Master Peace Officer, an FBI Lita Trilogy Award recipient, and has over 3,000 hours of Texas Commission on Law Enforcement training. That's all according to a release from the city of Uvalde. Back here closer to home, some developing stories we've been following today. We now know the name of a 23-year-old woman who was killed after San Antonio police say she drove off the access road and onto the highway. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified her as Jada Rocha. A fatal crash happened just after 4 a.m. this morning on I-10 West on the far northwest side. When police arrived, they found the vehicle had hit the barrier wall on the access road, went over the edge, and landed on the car's roof on the highway. Rocha was pulled from the vehicle by San Antonio fire crews, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. San Antonio police hoping evidence left behind will lead to the arrest of an armed robbery suspect from yesterday. The robbery happened just before 10 a.m. at a store on South General McMullen Drive. That's not far from Casterville Road and Highway 90. The store manager told police the suspect walked in and asked for cash. After he was given the money, the manager say the suspect then showed a knife and asked for even more money. That same manager was able to get a hidden baseball bat, which sent the suspect running. While escaping, that suspect left the knife and the cell phone behind. Police are hoping to use both of those to identify him. Take a look at seeing things happening this week. Today begins National Crime Victims Rights Week. The local victims and their families are coming together to commemorate the event. They met today with law enforcement and nonprofits to discuss how best to serve victims affected by crime, along with ways to prevent more tragedies from occurring. The Department of Justice's Office for Victims of Crime selected this year's theme. It is Survivors' Voices Elevate, Engage, Affect Change. The goal of the week is to bring awareness along with providing resources to those affected. The pandemic showed us how important and even life-saving technology is, but older adults who didn't know how to use it became very isolated. That's why UTSA gave more than 100 senior citizens free iPads and the training to use them. The night team's Camelia Juarez uh, tells us how free equipment and technology classes are empowering and helping older adults get and stay connected. The world is changing so quick, you know, we get left behind, but here we had the opportunity to learn 
Yeah. And we enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Manuel Palacio and his wife Cecilia were one of the 180 seniors who completed a five-week technology training course created by UTSA through a grant. Thank you. They learned how to make Zoom calls, learned how to email, explore Google applications, and even YouTube. I'm a little bit smarter. And I learned a lot. That that's a positive feeling for folks. Daryl Greer with the Older Adults Technology Services says during the COVID-19 pandemic, many seniors became isolated and out of touch with life-saving resources. How to get your vaccination, you needed an email. And if people don't understand how important an email is, then they don't really, they, they can't access it. Greer says digital inclusion can also help seniors stay healthy, both mentally and physically, like making Zoom calls with family members or accessing telemedicine. The more frequently you're seen by a doctor, the, the, the greater your health is, the more that they're going to quicker catch on any type of negative health outcomes. Palacio says he's thankful for the education so he doesn't feel left out. We learned that seniors can contribute and can learn from, the, from that iPad, and it's amazing. A set of digital inclusion courses will be offered at six other senior centers in the fall, but all 160 spots have already been accounted for. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. The first weekend of Fiesta 2023 has come to a close, but not before family and friends got together to have some fun. This is a look at the Fiesta de la Fam Familia event at St. Gregory, the great Catholic Church and School organizers say this is the 26th year for that event. It included carnival games and activities, live performances, a barbecue plate sale. The Fiesta event also services as a fundraiser for the school and church. All the funds that we raise at our festival go back to help our, our school and our improvement plan and we're just really excited to have, be able to have this event today. It also included a silent auction as part of their fundraiser. And buckle up for a whole new week of Fiesta fun. One of this week's big events, the 78th annual Texas Cavaliers River Parade, which of course you can expect live coverage on air and online from KSAT. For more information on that event, along with others happening tomorrow, head to KSAT.com. All right, let's take a look outside here with live cam this Sunday night. What a weekend of weather we had across South Central Texas yesterday. Absolutely beautiful. We started off with lower humidity, plenty of sunshine. We did see the cloud cover return though into the afternoon. And then of course we had a cold front move in overnight last night. That sparked up some scattered rain, even some thunderstorms that turned into more of a widespread soaking event for some earlier this morning. Morning. And because of that, you can see the difference in temperatures that we had from one side of the weekend to the other. Spring like yesterday, near 80. But today in the afternoon, we were only able to climb into the low to mid 60s here in San Antonio. Now, temperatures right now are in the 50s. We've got another cooler than average day in the works as we head into your Monday. It's also possible that we see some areas of patchy drizzle for the Monday morning drive. So you'll want the long sleeve first thing tomorrow. Daytime highs only topping off in the mid to upper 60s. As we head into Tuesday, we've got another scattered rain and storm chance to talk about, as well as some warming temperatures. We'll get you all those details coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll look forward to it. Tomorrow will be the last day. Emergency preparation supplies will be tax-free for Texans. This is according to the Texas Comptroller's Office, who announced the sales tax holiday starting yesterday and ending tomorrow at midnight. On your screen right now, a look at a list of items that will be tax-free. They are portable generators, emergency ladders, axes, batteries, coolers, first aid kits, just to name a few. There are price caps for the approved items along with a list of items that do not apply. You can find all this information right now on our website at ksat.com. Coming up, danger on two different planes have left passengers shaken, and now they're sharing their experiences. Plus, having an unexpected expense can be crippling to your bank account if you don't have good savings, which is why an emergency fund is necessary. The best ways to start one now. And two shootings in two different states affecting kids as young as 12. The details on those shootings and the push happening this week to get gun reform passed nationwide. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. 
Fiesta gives back through the founding event of Fiesta San Antonio, the Battle of Flowers Parade, attracting millions of locals since 1891. The Battle of Flowers is where Fiesta reigns. The annual Fiesta event is put on by the Battle of Flowers Association, the only all-women, all-volunteer organization producing events of its kind. The group is a civic nonprofit organization whose objective is to teach the history of our state and keep the patriotic traditions of Texas and San Antonio alive. There are 400 active members and many honorary members who volunteer their time to give back to the city and community. More gun violence is rattling multiple communities across the U.S. this weekend. Here in Texas, an after-prom party shooting in Washington, D.C., back-to-back -back shootings where one child was injured. The latest violence comes as lawmakers who have been in the headlines get set to meet with President Joe Biden to discuss the future of gun reform. In Washington, D.C., police are searching for suspects in back-to-back -back shootings Friday night that left eight people wounded, including a 12-year-old girl. We're looking for a black sedan, possibly a Mercedes, uh, who witnesses say uh, drove through the block and indiscriminately fired upon individuals here in La Bomb. Here in Texas, authorities are investigating a shooting that sent at least nine teens to the hospital this morning near Jasper, just two hours west of Houston. It happened just after midnight at a home during an after prom party. According to police, the victims range in age from 15 to 19 years old. The investigation there is ongoing. And on Monday, the so-called Tennessee Three are set to meet with President Biden to talk about the gun crisis in America. They're the lawmakers who drew national attention after protesting for stricter gun laws in the wake of Nashville's deadly school shooting last month. I think that we need um, emergency response because we're facing a crisis situation and that um, in states like ours, we need help from our, our national leaders. It is also to think about beyond executive orders, what other authority exists within departments and agencies uh, that the president is ultimately responsible for. According to a recent survey by the Kaiser Family Foundation, worry and fear about gun violence are widespread in the United States, adding more than one in five adults has had a family member killed by a gun, including suicide. Some more statistics. There have been more mass shootings than days in the year so far and more shootings at this point this year than any other year since at least 2013. Turning now to weather, as Adam Kasky likes to say, things got a little rowdy last <laughs> night, Mia, yes. and now we're dealing with some cooler temperatures. What are things looking like as we get into parade week? Exactly, yeah, very Adam Kasky-esque yes. with the rowdy, for sure. Yeah, it was a very uh, kind of loud and noisy night across portions of South Central Texas. We had that cold front move through that ended up sparking more of a widespread rain and storm chance earlier this morning. Even had some reports of some hail and some of those stronger thunderstorms, and yes, some strong winds. We don't like having to deal with the severe weather, but we do like the rainfall. Let's take a look at some of those rainfall totals since last night. Just under half of an inch reported in places like Gonzales, Seguin, over three quarters of an inch in Kennedy, over one inch of rain in Pleasanton, Tilden, and in even stretching into our far western counties for places like Del Rio and over into Eagle Pass. Now here in Bear County, 0.44 officially over at the airport, just under an inch of rain over in Adkins on the southeast side, 0.78 at Stinson, 0.55 over in Holotus, just to add on to that running total of rainfall here for the month of April. Now, as we head into our Monday, I do think some patchy drizzle will be possible tomorrow morning. We dry things out a little bit into the afternoon, and then a few more isolated light showers could try to develop tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night. Cloudy skies and cooler air making for an Another cooler than average day to kickstart the upcoming work week into Tuesday and Wednesday. Those temperatures are going to start to warm closer to where we should be for this time of year. But we also have another scattered rain and storm chance that does look to work back into the forecast on Tuesday specifically. We'll see a front move in pre dawn Thursday. That's going to kind of sweep out some of the humidity just before the upcoming weekend and also allow for more sunshine to return there as well. So we'll talk all about it 
Tonight, starting off though with a look outside current conditions, cloud cover still in place. Temperature sitting at 56 degrees over at the airport. Still is a little breezy. Winds out of the north at about 14 miles per hour this hour. Those winds are going to subside just a little bit more through the overnight. It is going to be a chilly start to our Monday. So as you are stepping out for the morning commute, take the light jacket with you. We'll start off in the low to mid 50s across the majority of the area. And then again, still cooler than average as we head into our Monday afternoon with those thermometers topping off in the mid to upper 60s for most around 65 on the north side of Bear County, maybe some upper 60s on the south side, closer to 70 across our southern county, 64 in Kerrville, 66 in comfort for your Monday afternoon. Again, the cloud cover is expected to stick with us throughout the majority of the day. Tomorrow morning, probably will need to use the windshield wipers a little bit depending on where those patches of, of drizzle do set up. And then it will be a drier afternoon, but if you are stepping out to the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tomorrow, 7 p.m., just a 20 to 30% potential for a couple of isolated light showers, temperatures falling through the low 60s, winds out of the east southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's time this out, though, on your future cast, depicting what the radar could look like here over the next 36 to 48 hours. Again, this is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You can see, yes, some pockets of light rain and drizzle expected. By lunchtime, we really start to dry things out. That is the theme throughout the afternoon tomorrow. And then heading into Monday evening, this is 6 p.m., so around dinner time, a couple of isolated light showers certainly possible. That continues into the 9 to 10 p.m. hour. And then into the overnight and early Tuesday morning, another morning to take the rain gear with you. We're going to see a disturbance push across the Lone Star State. That combined with some additional moisture does look to spark up a scattered rain and yes, storm chance, especially east of San Antonio by Tuesday afternoon. So we'll monitor that as well. Temperature wise, we will start to warm things up Tuesday and into Wednesday. We're in the upper 70s to low 80s. We'll see the first of two cold fronts move in before the sun comes up on Thursday. That also could spark another chance for some scattered thunderstorms. And then yes, we see the sunshine return Thursday and into Battle of Flowers time on Friday. Maybe a stray lingering shower with that second front that moves in early Saturday. And then conditions are still looking pretty good for the flambeau on Saturday evening, guys. Good news, not that San Antonio backs down from Fiesta events because of some rain. This might quite <laughs> possibly be the coolest weather I've seen for Fiesta in the 19 years I've been here. Well, That's love good it. stuff. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, a preview of Instant Replay with Larry right after this. The 2023 NFL Draft starts this Thursday night with the first round. The Houston Texans have the second overall pick, while the Dallas Cowboys have the 26th overall selection. For more on that and what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's check in with my friend Larry Ramirez. All right, so you can watch round one yes. right here live, Case at 12 starting at 7 p.m. Okay. on Thursday. So the Houston Texans own two first-round draft picks, and it's not 100% clear what they plan to do coming up tonight on Instant Replay. Should the Cowboys take first, in your opinion? Well, uh, I, I think the moves they made this offseason give them some real flexibility. Dallas Cowboys great and three-time Super Bowl champion Troy Aikman was in town on Tuesday. We talked Cowboys draft needs, the possibility of Ezekiel Elliott rejoining the boys, Damar Hamlin, and Troy's beer ate elite lager. There's no need for me to say anything to him. He you know how much I love him. You know, I think he hurts more than anybody because uh, he expects to make those game-winning field goals. The Brahmas almost beat the D.C. Defenders Saturday, the top team in the XFL, to keep their postseason hopes alive. But several missed opportunities, including a potential game-winning kick, cost the Brahmas a dub, and it's season over for Heinz Ward and his guys. Nelson takes the snap. Running out of time, he throws, it's caught for the touchdown. Talk about an exciting win. The San Antonio Gunslinger scored as time expired to win at Albany last night to edge the defending champs. If you like close games, then the Gunslingers are for you. Plus, SAFC picked a point at home, a vicious body shot stopped Ryan Garcia, and a Sasquatch named Pasquatch earns our Insira Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram play of the week. That's tonight on Instant Replay. And you're perked up, Gerbs. Why was this not the lead? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's got me tuning in right there, Larry. He's still going. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my God. Pasquatch. Fantastic. We are watching Instant Replay and it's coming up right after us. But first, having an emergency fund can be easier than you realize. We'll break down the steps to get you started that won't hurt your wallet today.
And violent conflict in Sudan affecting travel here in the States. The ongoing situation there and what the U.S. is trying to do for Americans stuck there. And a plane full of passengers worried for their safety after their plane hit by a bird strike. How the crew was able to get everyone to safety. That and Sasquatch coming up on Instant Replay. <laughs> Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta Gives Back through its grand nighttime celebration on the Riverwalk, the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. One night each year, the Riverwalk is lined with thousands of Fiesta goers catching glimpses of festive, decorated riverboats. It's a night of celebration, but it's also a party with a purpose. All money raised through the Texas Cavaliers River Parade supports local children's charities through the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation. The Texas Cavaliers encourage, foster, support, and conduct activities and programs to benefit Texas children. In collaboration with the River Parade and King Antonio, the Texas Cavaliers have raised more than $8 million for children's charities and organizations to date. So head on down and pull up a seat next to the river and experience the magic of the River Parade. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. Now to some harrowing moments on board two planes. An American Airlines flight was forced to return to the airport this morning after a possible bird strike sparked an engine fire. Now this comes just days after another American Airlines flight caught fire as that plane prepared for takeoff. Here's ABC's Alex Prache, who spoke with passengers on both of those planes. American Airlines Flight 1958, traveling from Columbus, Ohio to Phoenix, was forced to return to the Columbus Airport shortly after takeoff. Mayday, mayday, mayday. American uh, 1958, we had a bird strike in an engine failure. The flames visible in this video taken from the ground, according to American, the crew reporting a possible bird strike. Many people started crying and going into tears because we just didn't know if we were going to make it or not, frankly. It was terrifying and I comforted, you know, as many people as I could next to me. I don't know what to say. I'm still in shock. Um, I didn't start crying until after I got off the plane. The flight landed safely and taxied to the gate under its own power. The airlines issued a statement saying the aircraft was taken out of service for maintenance and our team is working to get customers back on their way to Phoenix. The incident comes just days after the American Airlines plane caught fire while taxiing as it prepared to take off from Charlotte Douglas Airport on Thursday en route to Dallas. Nobody knows what's happening, so that's the first instinct is the plane's going to blow. So everyone's grabbing their bags, trying to get up and run in the aisle. Claire Dungeon was also on that flight. Everyone was trying to panic, but it was like, we couldn't go anywhere either. So I think that was the biggest scares. A spokesperson for American Airlines tells ABC News American Airlines Flight 2288 returned to the gate before takeoff after reporting a mechanical issue. The aircraft was taken out of service for maintenance. There were no injuries reported from either incident. Alex Perche, ABC News, Columbus, Ohio. All right, now to Disneyland. Look at this massive fire that broke out there. Officials say a giant dragon caught fire during the park's Fantasmic show last night. Fantasmic is a long-running nighttime Disney show that features special effects, state-of-the-art projections, and superb pyrotechnics, including Maleficent. That was a quote from them. It's Maleficent is a 45-foot fire-breathing dragon. Disney says Anaheim Fire and Rescue responded quickly and were able to put the fire out. All cast members and guests were evacuated due to smoke and wind. Disney officials still trying to figure out what went wrong. Isn't that how Maleficent meets her end in the movie? Yeah. Scientists got a surprise after this 14-foot hammerhead shark washed ashore pregnant with pups on an Alabama beach. Authorities in Orange Beach say after that shark washed up last week, researchers discovered it had been pregnant with 40 shark pups. It's unclear how that shark died. Staff with the city's Coastal Resources Group called the large shark a rare find in a unique case study. Well, there are 288 days until Iowa's first Republican caucuses. In the meantime, the 2024 campaign already in full swing. Former Vice President Mike Pence took to the stage at an annual presidential candidate forum hosted by the Faith and Freedom Coalition. He has not announced his candidacy, but seems to be laying the groundwork for a possible run. Former President Donald Trump, who is facing 34 felony counts of fraud, is a clear frontrunner for the Republican nomination, not attending the event in person, but sending this video message. 
Other Republican hopefuls who attended include Arkansas's governor and a South Carolina senator. One notable absence, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who has not announced but is said to be eyeing a bid. We take our job seriously in Iowa. I would like Trump to be the president again. Once it's all said and done, we get behind whoever the person is. The next presidential election will be November 5th, 2024. As of now, sitting President Joe Biden has not made a formal announcement for his run, but he is expected to. The U.S. military has helped evacuate embassy personnel and their families from the war-torn country of Sudan. But there are still 16,000 Americans stuck with no means of escape right now. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has uh, now has more between uh, the military forces and has left uh, hundreds killed and thousands injured. U.S. Special Forces, including the Navy's SEAL Team 6, carried out a dangerous mission to evacuate American embassy personnel from Sudan. Three Chinook helicopters took off from a U.S. base in Djibouti, flying 800 miles to Sudan's capital, Khartoum. A National Security Council spokesperson tells ABC News President Biden authorized the operation on Friday. The president saying in a statement, I am grateful for the unmatched skill of our service members. Those helicopters were on the ground in Sudan less than an hour hour before airlifting almost 100 American diplomats and staff, along with their families, out of the country. Anytime you're flying, um, you know, at 100 knots, uh, very close to the ground in pitch black, um, there's certainly some risk there. The Pentagon calling the mission fast and clean, with no shots fired at the choppers in Khartoum and no casualties. Secretary of State Antony Blinken monitored the operation in real time. The violence in Sudan now in its second week, the result of a power struggle between two rival military generals. In nine days, more than 420 people have died and nearly 4,000 more injured. Several other countries, including Italy, France and the UK, are now working to evacuate their embassies. The State Department says there are no large-scale evacuation plans in place for the roughly 16,000 Americans still in Sudan. The Pentagon said that they could maybe think about setting up a safe corridor between Khartoum and Port Sudan, and that presumably using drones would allow the U.S. Navy to take people out by sea. With the airport now closed, that 518-mile road from Khartoum to the port of Sudan is one of the only ways out. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. All right, shoppers, that 20% off Bed Bath & Beyond coupon in your drawer or email is only good for a few more days. Bed Bath & Beyond filed for bankruptcy today, and the company says it will stop accepting coupons this Wednesday. Instead, Bed Bath & Beyond expects to offer, quote, deep discounts on its products as part of its going out of business sales. Profits for Bed Bath & Beyond took a big hit after stores closed for months because of the pandemic. The company has been trying to cut costs by closing more than half of its stores since late last year. I love Bed Bath & Beyond. I know, I've got a lot of those coupons. Gotta use them. Did y'all notice the wind today? Yes. It was windy. Did. It was windy out there this morning. After that front moved through, we had wind shift in from the north northeast. And yes, when you combined that wind with the rain, the cloud cover and the cooler air moving in. Yeah, it was chilly out there for the back half of the weekend. Let's take a look at some of those max peak wind gusts across the region today. 35 mile per hour wind gust was the peak here in San Antonio. 47 miles per hour up in New Braunfels. 48 mile per hour wind gust clocked in over in Catula, 29 mile per hour wind gust over there in Carrizo Springs. Much quieter right now, still is a little breezy at times, closer to Bear County, still sustained out of the northeast at about 10 to 15, gusting upwards of 20 occasionally. Not going to be as windy as we head into our Monday, but still those cooler than average conditions will stick with us. Still have some more rain chances and then those warming temperatures to talk about. All of those details coming up in just a few. Thanks, Mia. Reaching a savings goal can be yours with just a few simple clicks. The best way to start saving now for your own emergency fund.